at Baker Street, hoping that a new case will come our way. Holmes is at, is at work. What a morbid thing to spend our time doing. Oh, I hope someone dies. <laughs> Holmes is at work at his chemical table, and Watson is busy reading the Times. The tranquility of the setting is suddenly broken by Watson. What balderdash, what rubbish, Holmes. Watson adds emphasis to his outburst by throwing the morning paper to the floor. How can the papers capitalise on people's superstitions, and the Times, Holmes. It's the Times that started it all. Watson walks over to the fireplace and begins to fill his pipe from the Parisian slipper. I must say, Watson, says Holmes, as he, he turns... He's tobacco <laughs> in, a, in a slipper. <laughs> yeah. Holmes, as he turns from his microscope, you must be upset to... For, you must be upset to forsake your beloved Arcadia from my shag. What is that this you is find so Victorian. disturbing? <laughs> <laughs> the affair of the uh, mummy's curse, I would assume. Yes, Holmes, you assume correctly. But it seems to be that you should be using your powers of deduction and not of assumption to clear up this matter. It has the whole city in an uproar. Three men dead, and we are to believe that it was cursed by a 4,000-year-old mummy. Mm. I am surprised that you have not shown some interest in this, Holmes. I have been following it in the papers and have made some inquiries. It does show some points of interest. I think most of the main points are lucid, but there are a few minor points that still have to be cleared up. I may look into it when I finish up the case I am now working on. You don't mean that you believe this balderdash about a curse being responsible for the deaths of three people? My dear Watson, there has been a curse of murder upon man since the beginning of time, and I do not claim to know the curse of that. Um, I think the cur I think the cause of these murders is a little closer at hand than a four thousand year old mummy. Holmes now turns his attention to us. Why don't you look into this? You may find something of interest. Ooh. And that is it. Why don't you look into it, Holmes? <laughs> I'm, I'm solving, money. I'm solving the murder of my my dealers butchered by Mrs. Well, I'm guessing we have to go to the papers. The papers yeah. So three men dead, four thousand by a four thousand year old mummy. Well, that was an easy main case information, but <laughs> whether there been hard since the first couple, mm. there had been much writing in there. Mm. Right. The editor of the time. There is a lot of mummy stuff in there. So, you two want to look at the new one? Do you want to read out some of the mummy stuff? Because yeah, really, we did yeah. treat it as an introduction, couldn't we? Yeah. To the editor of the Times, sir. With regard to the recent mummy murders, capital M and capital M. Um, I would like to suggest that we abandon our attempts to disturb the ancients in their graves or otherwise. This applies not only to such extravagance, uh, ex excavations as have, as have become so common in Egypt, Morocco and other foreign lands, but also, but also to such projects in our own British Isles. If a hypothesis of such men as James Ferguson, who believes that Stonehenge is an ancient uh, sepulchre, Sepulchral, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sepulchral monument of the Saxon Druids are true, we should, have, we should leave these burial grounds undisturbed. Surely if these murders are the work of some pre, uh, present day mortal human, the police will discover his identity and bring him to justice. I do sincerely believe, however, we should not meddle in the magic and sorcery of which we know naught, which we, ha which we have not the means to control the forces thus unleashed. Respectfully yours, J. A. Smuts. How do you spell his last name? Smut, with two T's and an S at the end. S U M U T E S. Smuts. Cool. J. R. Smuts. Um, He's in here. Full T S A. Let's go and beat him up. J. A. Smuts. Right. What else is there on the mummy? Uh, to the editor of the Times. Full T S A. Sir, the recent mummy affair points up a fact I have been trying to convince my fellow Britishers. For quite some time, Britishers. Yeah. That, that is the phenomenal number of crimes, particularly those of a serious nature, committed by foreigners. 
Shouldn't we act now to restrict access to our beloved isle before this tragedy becomes yet worse? Well, thank you, Edo. Who's that by? Uh, Johnny Bulldog. <laughs> Who's that actually really clever? Johnny Bulldog? I assume that's a pseudonym. Uh, yeah, so. Johnny Bulldog. Let's see if he's in there. No. From <laughs> print. Uh, foreign and colonial news. France. Uh, the pre- uh, the re elected the president. Um, much snow has fallen in Catalonia and wolves have descended from the Pyrenees <laughs> into the villages. Jesus. Um, yep, ballooning in France. I love that hunt. Not sure, Borg. They're chasing the balloons. Uh, the air also accompanied by Sean Walker Knight made an ascent proceeding to sea with his new balloon, which is fitted with sails and propellers and carries a new kind of gear enabling the aeronauts to remain two days at sea. That's a visual book. Dutch India. India. Uh, the very berry disease is increasing in Dutch India. The monopoly of steam navigation on the Indian archipelago, which has been confirmed conferred on a Dutch company, is stated to be in- injurious in the interests of Indian trade. Yeah, right. And an iron strike in America. Thirty employees have now signed the wage scale demanding demanded by the iron workers on strike. Mm. Fatal accidents. All right, here we go. A sad accident, which terminated fatally, uh, occurred on Monday last to Mr. Francis Scott. Oh, he's a Scott who gives a shit. Francis Scott. <coughs> That's Francis with an I, yeah. Yeah. Um, of Farley Castle, Somerset, who, while riding in his grounds, was thrown from his horse received a concussion of the brain and died in a few hours. Oh, gosh. The Farley estates, which include the highly interesting ruins of the old castle, oh, yeah. formerly the property of the Hungerford family, uh, re- reveres to his uncle, Sir Giles Scott, oh, GC, MG, Giles Scott. Any Giles Scott in here, which is 67 SW. Who was chief secretary to the government of Malta. 67 SW. Um, so he, he 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 was the chief secretary to the government of Malta oh. from fifty five to eighty three. That's eighteen hundred years ago. Um, and Mr. James Johnston and his son of the same name. Two James Johnsons. James Johnson and James Johnson. James Johnson Junior. James Johnson Junior. Jack Johnson Junior. Triple J. Junior. <laughs> um. Uh, the detectives are spasming. There's only three Johnsons in here, sorry. There's only three. I all called James. No. They're, they're none of them are called James. Well, I imagine it'll be a relative because James Johnson is dead. <laughs> oh, and Mr. James Johnson and his son, of the same name, were on Wednesday afternoon engaged in laying the foundation of a headstone in a cemetery at Toll Cross near Glasgow when the excavation, 14 foot deep, fell in. The father was carried down with the falling soil and stone and completely buried. The son had a very narrow escape. Oh. Many vill- villagers volunteered and attempted to recover the dump body, but it was so jammed that the efforts to excrete it were in vain. Oh, right. yeah. uh, in tunnel. There's some, shippy, there's some shippy intelligence. Agents and Two Mary Toss over there. Good meat. Good meat. Foreign arrivals. Bombay, nine. Bombay. Oh, yeah, no, I do that. <laughs> he <laughs> says what is from me. Right. Uh, Madeira. Flight of tea. Indeed. <laughs> uh, Philadelphia. Flight of tea. Quebec. Flight of French. <laughs> <laughs> and Sydney. Flight of Opera House. <laughs> <laughs> Home arrivals, Liverpool, Thool, Ibis. Ibis, that's an Egyptian name. Yeah, <coughs> that must be the boats then. Yeah, I guess think so. The Ibis. Morning, 39 minutes after 2. Morning. Oh, high water at London Bridge. Yeah. Right. That was um, 
Not mm. two chilli cracker things were over there as well. They were, but I tried to turn I took them to Phoenix and said they ate themselves. Oh, okay. uh, accent to a male steamer. Yep. Alan Wine steamer Prussian. Anything notable? No, there's some ship accidents. The clergy of the deanery of St George's Hanover Square, which includes most of the West of the West End parishes, have elected the following as their representatives. Uh, okay, so, so, yeah. Sir, as a ma- to the editor of the Times, sir, as a man of science and medicine, I must protest these innuendos of murderous mummies. Huh. The ancient Egyptians. Recent pieces. The recent pieces have different <laughs> To what to what end? Do they taste different like Smarties? No. They're, they're peanut butter. I know, but so they don't taste any different? No. That's weird. Mm. Sorry, editor no. of the Times. <laughs> um <laughs> recent pieces. Advertisement. I must protest these innuendos of murderous noise, no capital M's. Uh, the ancient Egyptians had progressed far in their own investigations of life and science. They had certainly not found the secret of everlasting life in the material world. Even had they, we could we cannot bring home the murder of two men to a forty thousand to a four thousand year old mummy. Not forty thousand. Goodness, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. uh, I can only repeat that this is utter nonsense and balderdash, without the slightest scientific or basic and. And disgrace the pages of your venerable newspaper. Oh, John. I am, <laughs> sir, your obedient servant, John H. Watson, MD. Uh, that's funny. You wrote that yesterday. Wow. No, three days ago. Um, okay. well, there's house. been cursed things going on for a while. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, John, shut up. Some houses to be rented. Hotels. Advertisement. Advertisement. Good. Advertisement. Good. Well, we have to go to a lot of hotels. We have nice hotels for families and gentlemen. Um, but not women. Osborne Hotel, Torquay. Uh, Australia Roberts Hotel in Sydney. Um, is lighted by electricity. Wow. And because this is oh. every modern convenience and comfort. There is a flushing toilet. Residence club, a new club in the finest area of London. For those who have been snubbed by old-fashioned clubs, oh. a new chef and high and highest class service. References, of course, required. Uh, Frankenstein, this evening at 8, the Allegra Theatre. Theatre? Savoy, this evening at 9, the Nautical Opera by W.S. Gilbert and Arthur Sullivan, entitled H.M.S. Pinafore. Is there a lot of bad books? Or the lass, and love, uh, or the lass that loved the sailor. Proceeded at eight by Mrs. Jeremy's Genie. Doors open at seven forty. Stage auditorium entirely lighted by electricity. Why? She's a flushing toilet. She stoops to conquer. Saturday next, Apollo Theatre. Oh. Uh, new, new books and editions. I've written down the Frankenstein because that's about life and death. So. Uh, overreaching. Frederick Warren and the Captain General. Uh, we recommend all who love true tales of adventure told in terse and nervous English to read the book. And so, was it terse and nervous? Yes. Nervous English. There's a book. Oh, nice, actually. Um, I even out the treats to bring to Sherlock Sessions. There's a bag of the sweets for the sour cream ones in the kitchen. Um, there is still so, sauce Books coming out. Chocolate. One's place is all letters to be postponed. Uh, governess, well versed in French, German, music, and drawing. Blue me neck. I tell you, a governess so is the thing to be. They're always wanting governess. So many people like me have lost our governess. We need someone to teach me. Five years. Yeah, should really <laughs> investigate this. Yeah. Five years, excellent. The, the governess murders. <laughs> uh, attendant companion for invalid. Oh. No able. Uh, no ailment or gentleman. <clears throat> No, yeah, no able men or gentlemen. able men or gentlemen. It's really weird to put the attendant there. Yeah. Able <laughs> no, yeah, no able men or gentlemen. Medically trained electrician what? for paralysis or rheumatism. Oh, right. Open know. for engagement. It even has its own lights and a running toilet. Yeah, you're after some births and marriages and deaths. 
Cool. Mummy. Birth. birth. Death. <laughs> mummy. Mummy things there. Birth. Twil- uh, twin girls stillborn. Um, what though? Hang on, they were stillborn or they were stillborn? This is such a pretty dark joke, man. Um, uh, Means so as what you mean to go on. A, a son born in South Africa. Um, marriages. Um, Thomas Joyce of Great Yarmouth to Mary Anne, elder daughter of John Faith of Kilbourne. Archer. Da, da, da. He, oh my god, Edwin Torn Wallace. Son of J.B. Francis Harford to Margaret Fisher. Daughter of Robert Wales. Thank you for throwing that at my crotch. Nerd! Yeah. Mm, Deaths. We've got crotch, crotch someone in Hong Kong dying of fever. Uh-huh. We've got a uh, creaky Sean. door. Sean. There's Sean. We've got after a long illness, the beloved wife. So illness again. And then from an accident whilst bathing, oh, William Fleet uh, in Canterbury. Died. Um, Agents of Shield on for a minute. Caution, Brandon. Going to come. Uh, oh, do you need to go tonight? No. Tonight's my morning. Uh, early or? About half nine. Okay, well, uh, not at all. If not, knock on my door and I'll wake up. Okay. I wake up to the slightest noise. <laughs> I'll sleep. Oh. Sleep um, Henrietta Cloth. What a Cloth, name. mommies. Um, <laughs> through American visitors. Um, Minston's China. There we go. Uh, Constable Miss Maria died in France in January 1889, leaving property. Her uh, rece- uh, representatives are requested to communicate with misers, Napoleon, Argyle, and co. solicitors. Lady spending summer in Germany and Italy wishes to meet another who would join her. Mm-hmm. Economy considered. For good times. <laughs> the in, 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 indigent? Indigent. 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 Indigent blind visiting society. The secretary gratefully acknowledges the receipt of five pounds from BS towards <laughs> providing more than nine hundred of the blind poor with tolls for the relief. <laughs> Money, London and Westminster Loan and Discount Company. Advances made in sums of ten pounds to five hundred pounds on personal security deeds, furniture bills and so. Mutual fund assurances, limited incorporated, Waterloo. Bridge advances money. Two two examples of people advancing money. Uh, Replayable by instalments. Paying off choke. Choke. Miscellaneous. Scotland, a gentleman is forming a shooting party limited to seven or eight members to shoot one of the finest moors in Scotland. Those poor moors. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Why do you want to slow? Stage as a profession. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen adopting the stage should apply for a prospectus of dramatic and burlesque training college. Fees low. Staff of professors. Constant practice and appearance. No risk, no task is too great for Brody's task force. Able bodied men, all, for jobs of all sites and all difficulties. Try us and see. Uh, situations. A brewing pupil, an, ex- an, excep- an exceptional opportunity presents itself at a large brewery in the west of England where one only one pupil is taken. The gentleman wishing to learn thoroughly brewing, theoretical, and practical. Learn of brewing. Law associates design a clerkship with a view to partnership. Syndicate requires six gentlemen to form a syndicate. In such an evil word. To purchase a very <laughs> valuable business with a view to the formation of the public company. A potential profit of 1,400 per year and a yearly increase. Qualifications, five hundred pounds. Ooh, that's fucking weird. Houses to let and be sold. Offices and wine sellers wanted. Um, required to rent a detached house with six or seven bedrooms with a good secluded garden. Eastbourne, detached furnished residence facing the sea. Uh, number five, Fitzroy Square, one of the largest and best houses in the square. Flats for all people, some furniture required. Provided, so therefore also some required. <laughs> uh, latest intelligence from our correspondents, the plots to kill the Tsar. Yeah. A telegram from Odessa says that 482 officers of the army arrived there yesterday under a strong military escort. They were accused of participation in the last attempt on the Tsar's life and will be transported to Eastern Asia. France? Tsar wrong. France and Morocco. Uh, M. La Maritiniere, who is engaged in archaeological resources in Morocco on behalf of the French. M. Mart. Martin. Ier. Martin. Martin. Ier. Martin. Uh, And the English Archaeological Studies has been seriously assaulted. 
He's been seriously assaulted by the Sheik of Al Algarbury after an altercation yeah. with the latter concerning the supplies of provision. Discovery that the sarcophagus of Alexander the Great. Uh, further examination of the sarcophagi recently discovered in Saadi in Syria shows that among the, among the sarcophagus of Alexander the Great containing the body of the monarch, China and the Vatican, the convention on negotiation for some time passed between the Chinese government and the Vatican for the direct representation of the Holy See at Peking has been concluded, and the Monsignia, Monsignia, Monsignia. 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 thank you, Al Rigadori has been appointed as the post of Inner Nusipatinto, thus rendered necessary in the Chinese capital. Monsignia Rigadori will leave for Pekin. <laughs> That's, that's, a, that's an easy word, isn't it? Representations have been made by the Chinese government that the departure of the Indian in Gavir should be expedited as much as possible. It's known that the Vatican and the French assumption of the protectorate over the Catholic missions in China and the native Christians, depending on them, has produced a feeling of strong dissatisfaction among the Chinese official class. <coughs> and that the apprehension is felt in Pekin that unless Indian and the show arrive shortly in order to terminate the present and Saturday state of things, serious disorders may result. Germany and Zanzibar. It is announced that the German squadron will be leaving Zanzibar, where they have been maintaining arrangements for the East African Delimitation Conference. Mummy strikes again! Hey. Yes, everything else was meaningless. The body, First bit was meaningless. The body of James Windybank was discovered <laughs> late yesterday in the room he was preparing for the British Museum's exhibit. How are you spelling Windybank? Windybank. With an I. Windybank. Yeah, uh, there. He's actually. James Windybank is actually. Windybank. Well, he's not there anymore. What's he? 12NW. Well, he's dead now. But he yeah. was preparing for the British Museum's exhibit of newly discovered artifacts from the tomb of Katabet's mummy. The archaeologist was found strangled. Finally, a freaking clue. Yeah. Around his neck were linen bandages of the type used by the ancient Egyptians in wrapping mummies. Windy Banks, Windy Banks is the third murder to be associated with the mummy Katabet in the past six weeks. Look up Katabet, has he got an address? Uh, Claire, I'm joking, it's a 4,000 year old Where's, mummy. Oh, <laughs> I was reading that song. <laughs> no worries. The archaeologist had can't find his house. <laughs> the arche <laughs> his, his pyramid. <laughs> the archaeologist had accompanied the London University sponsored expedition to Egypt. So it was London University that prompted the expedition. The project has been cursed with ill luck since the first discovery of the tomb several months ago. So that's when the first one several months ago. Its organizer, new name. Where is that? Doctor Ebenezer Turnbull, who is Turnbull. dead, probably, he is. was murdered. <laughs> is that in the last newspaper? Yeah. No way. Nice one. We should we should yeah. read that one out as well. Turn, cool. What was it? Turn... Turnbull, but he's dead. Ebenezer, Ebenezer ago, right? Probably. Seven M W is him. Oh well, cool. Um, um, but there is a Werner cool. which Turnbull, well, which is at fifty eight S. Well. He was murdered in the actual tomb it's <coughs> itself. Another archaeologist, Andrew Weatherby, met a similar face. Andrew, Andrew Weatherby. Andrew, Andrew Weatherby. Weatherby. Yeah. A similar face on board the ship returning to England. The Jardin ship Eastern Empress was the scene of that mysterious it's death. Eight. Uh, What's the name of that ship? The Eastern Empress. The shipboard investigation was handled by Captain Herman Ramsey. Herman Ramsey. Mm -hmm. And his first officer, Luther Tenney. Tenney. Oh, Luther Ten N E Y. Is this the one you'd look for? Ten N E Y. Scotland Yard has declined to name any suspects at this time. I don't think this. Well. The first death of Dr. Ebenezer is mentioned in this one. Right. So, well, and, there, and there that. isn't a paper between this one and that one. Right, well, there we go then. Cool. Where yeah. was Ebenezer killed? What date? Uh, the 5th of, well, this one's the 5th of March. 5th of March. What happened? Tell us, Alec. Your mother's birthday. Oh, did you just not find the excavations in Egypt then? <coughs> the excavations in Egypt. 
Oh, the mod- no, but I was on about the, de- the, other, the other death uh, one for the paper. Uh, but this is, this is long time. before them. Yeah. This is James, long James Windivac. Yeah, yeah, that'll be when they first made oh, the excavation video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So have a read of it. Okay, cool. Um, so anyway, I'll come down in a second. Okay. Um, archaeologist dead in mummy's tomb. Karnak, March 4th. Professor Ebenezer Turnbull, organiser of the Kebet tomb expedition, was found dead in the tomb early this morning. The inner chamber was reached early th- early in the year, you know, early in the year, after much diff- difficult labour, and the archaeologists were quite ecstatic over the excellent condition of the sar- sarcophagus, chamber artefacts, and the Cape Bet mummy itself. The party was in the final weeks of its work in the area where disaster struck. Mr. Turnbull, who had worked who uh, had worked late into the night, the yeah. uh, remaining in the chamber alone after other members of the party had retired for the night. His body was discovered by Mr. Andrew Weatherby. Was that the other guy who died? That's the guy who just died recently. Oh, no. yeah. Andrew Weatherby was yes. the other guy. Yeah, yeah. on the boat. <coughs> yeah. So, yeah, his was discovered by Mr. Andrew Weatherby, another of the project archaeologists. Mr. Turnbull had been strangled to death. Ancient Strangled, linen. Yeah. Strangled as well. Right. Yeah, ancient linen bandages were found around his neck. Upon hearing of the professor's death, several of the natives working on the excavation called upon Isis and Osiris for protection and forgiveness. Isis, of Isis. Odd night, odd day. <laughs> Isis and Osiris for protection and forgiveness for disturbing the sacred tomb. Inscriptions found on the on the Kepanic jars and doors canoptic canoptic jars, right, and doors. Indicate that the death may be mysterious, maybe the mysterious work oh, of the mommy. ancient god <coughs> Tarmotef. Oh, okay. Just jot him down. Put him down as a and his, that, that chap. <laughs> and his goddess, Neith. Well, well, Jacka, where is she? Right then, an Irish one. <laughs> Let's go to the original. Hang on, and there's this one. Recent excavations in Egypt, specifically. Um, I think it's is this the previous one? Yes, that, the one yeah. before that, yeah. Cool. So who's this? Uh, this is uh, August 17th, 1888. Who's the murder? Who's the oh. victim here? No, no, victim. No. This is this is just discovering just... the tomb. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, maybe there'll be a name. But okay. yeah. that going... Recent excavations in Egypt at the London University College on Wednesday afternoon before an appreciative audience, Dr. Ebenezer Turnbull delivered a lecture which dealt with his history of excavations and the method by which they may most profitably be conducted. Turnbull and the archaeologists James Windybank and Andrew Weatherby. Ah, so Windybank was the one who was just being killed. Yeah. yeah. So they didn't know each other. Uh, are embarking this week on a new Egyptian expedition. Ah, and Ex- Windybank went on the expedition, didn't know yes. that. Right. Uh, ex- excavating Quebec's tomb at the head of the valley of the kings near Karnak and Luxor. Yeah. Saturday's lecture was illustrated by, photo- by photographs thrown on a screen by the electric light which showed... Uh, vividly, electricity now. It showed vividly and distinctly not only the work done at its ver- various stages, but the modus operandi, the conditions under which which work of this character must be carried on, and the instruments necessary for the purpose, and enable those present to realise that, in classical study as in the sciences, there is an ample field of experiment and discovery upon, open to the individual. Dr. Turnbull prefaced his lecture by an exclamation by an explanation of the real objects of these excavations. In these days, whatever might have given the first stimulus to such efforts, the primary motive was certainly not to find and keep treasure any more than it was the aim of the astronomer to possess a star. Hmm. The modern archaeologist was a was little to be confounded with a treasure seeker as the mineralogist was with the gold miner. Huh. Uh, his aim must be to restore, restore to life the momentous of bygone times, to bring vividly before us the, the various phases of ancient societies, whether civilised or uncivilised. This is where the murderer is, the lion tamer guy from the, the thing, and he's actually like, I'm fucking Indiana Jones! <laughs> it belongs in a museum! <laughs> They want it is in a museum. It belongs mm. in my museum. <laughs> He's anti-Jones. Right, so, so 
established a murder one, doesn't Turnbull it? wasn't in it for the money. No, none of them were. Well, Turnbull wasn't. Well, Turnbull wasn't, no. But wasn't we don't it? know that the rest shared that perspective. What's the other murder victim's um, thing? Was none of that? No. Wasn't there a story about that? No. No. Oh. No, no, the, no there's that's a story about the last one. That's why it tells us to investigate it so we can go and talk yeah, to them. Yeah, there's one about the, the Brit- last one. Was it at the British Museum? Uh, like London University. What? The, no, 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 the, no, the murder. The, 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 this murder, yeah. the latest murder. Um, I imagine... In, in the room he's bearing for the British Museum. Yeah, yeah. we should go to the British Museum. 38, British Museum. 38 WC. Yeah. No, there's Windy Bank's murder, which mentions the other two. There's the first murder... Which mentions Turnbull, and then there's that one which mentions all three of them together. And the London University has got that in there, so um, just in case we go there. So I've just found the museum under libraries. University College, London. University Library. The University. The University, the university of Library. Pinko Liberal Dax. Right, should we go to the museum? Yeah. Mm. I think it's a good job. It's a very good first step, doesn't it? If we had looked properly through the other pages, I think it mentioned these Claire's characters. Claire's just looked Yeah, the, I can't okay. see anything else related to Just in case it's anything named, naming these characters, because they might pop up, or these people, because they might pop Because that's what happened with the other guy in that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, when we were asked to consult the papers and we needed yeah. to. So. Well, we can give that another round once we're sort of yeah. stuck, maybe, okay? No. What do you mean once we're stuck? Why have we got to be stuck? That's never happened before. Metro Gibbons, your mother is ill. Silly <laughs> Metro. <laughs> Metro Gibbons. Right, go on then. Did it mention any, uh, did it say something about they've been shipped in on a ship? Did it mention they a shipping? They came on a ship, yeah. Did it mention a shipping company? The, ship? no. the Jardin ship. The no shipboard company. investigation. The, 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 the Jardin the ship, Eastern, Eastern Empress. The Eastern Empress. And the Jardin Company then. I don't know, I don't know if there was a company, you know, something to do with shipping, yeah. but... Well, this Captain James Ram... Captain Herman that Ramsey... Is, that, is, that is a company. And Luther Tenney. It is. The Jardim. Yeah. Okay. Ah, well, I like speaking to them. Jardim Matheson, okay. 15 EC. 15. 15 well, EC. I'm... Uh, just, just, that's all. It's always good to go to the museum, I feel. Yeah, sure. It's always good to go to the museum. Well, it's free, oh, it's so... Free. My hopes. The museum. No going to a museum. Uh, Not all museums. 38 WC. <coughs> 38 WC. Well, there's no, been a lot of writing. You've learned some reading. You sexy beast. Yeah. A good one. Oh. What yes. would help? British Museum. 38 WC. You're attacked by the mummy. Oh, interesting. You are dead. <laughs> you should never have gone to the museum. Game over. <laughs> you may not read any of them over. Do you have the Periat of Wisdom? No, you are dead. <laughs> uh, WC, yeah? mm-hmm. cool. Leland Johnson, a curator of the Egyptian collection. L-E-L-E L-E Lamb and then Johnson. Curator of the Egyptian collection shows us into the second Egyptian room, the scene of the murder. In the middle of the room is an ancient sarcophagus gold-covered surface reflecting the light that passes through the east windows. Windy Bank's body was found in the sarcophagus, states Johnson. All right. Inside the sarcophagus? Yes, inside. A rather appalling sight greeted one of the guards when he made his rounds. As he entered the room, he noticed the top of the sarcophagus was a skew. As he moved closer, he saw that... What? It was a skew. It was a skew. To one angle. Out of place. As he moved closer, he saw the man's hand protruding from the sarcophagus. Thinking that the mummy was attempting to leave its resting place, he ran from the room to get me. Some of the guards have been a little on edge since the stories of Mr. Weatherby's death. Some of the guards have been a little askew. <laughs> out of place! <laughs> That's a dunty! <coughs> I returned the, to the room, and with the guards' help, we removed the top of the sarcophagus of off. And found the body of James Windybank. Of James Windybank. Did you say they removed the lid? They removed the top of the sarcophagus and found the body of James Windybank atop Catabet's mummy. Atop it? 
So yeah, so it had been piled so it, inside. So it's sort of killed him. Put him in. Inside Ooh, him. Put the you wouldn't think that the mummy would stand up well to that. Yeah. Oh, just uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love mummy now. <laughs> Around his, around his neck was a linen bandage, the type used to wrap mummies. A very eerie sight, I must say. Who else had access to the room? The museum was open to the public yesterday. This room was closed. White. Ah! Look up the address of the public. This room was closed. White, the expedition, was being set up. While <laughs> the expedition was being set up. But there are no extraordinary precautions to keep people out. Just the rope across the entrance. <laughs> Do you have any idea who might have wanted to kill? Do you have any idea who might have wanted to kill Wimby Banks? No, not at all. I didn't know him very well. He didn't work for the museum, you know. Oh, he was with London University. The university and the university, the university and the museum were joint sponsors of the Catabed expedition. Can you think of anyone who might shed some light on this affair? No, I'm sorry, I can't think of anything at all. <laughs> Help! My brain! It's <laughs> completely blank! It's left! It's left me! <laughs> Surely you know the university and the museum have a deadly rivalry. <laughs> the Oxford, the university of most race. Could you tell us the address of the university <laughs> since we cannot find it? It's a London directory. Open to the public room closed. Yes. Oh, I hate that when you get to a room. It's like, oh, there's a rope in the way! Am I, I can't London? get through this rope! Well, if it wasn't that rope, this mummy would be running around London killing all British the sensibility rope. says you do not cross said rope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh. so east windows might be relevant later on. Body found in sarcophagus, gold plated, it was askew. The lid was on, the guy was in the bottom and the mummy was on top. The mummy was underneath. Other way around. Oh. He was on top of the mummy. Oh, okay. He was atop the mummy. <laughs> a top and a skew the mummy! He got a bandage around He was a top and a skewing the mummy. Yeah. It was open to the public, room closed. Rope cross, Windybank worked for the university. University. Yeah. I need to find the university of London. I think it actually might be on the map, you know. Because I remember us looking at it last time. I have to peruse the map. Well, you Perhaps you could pass the directory, Bill. <laughs> yes, the directory. <laughs> it might be in the main. We have names of which to, to choose the names from. Names of which to choose from. <laughs> Do you think the body would have gone to our, our mortuary cat? Mm. The university. Maybe, but... Uh, Seems a bit a tad quick to quickly run to him, doesn't it? Yeah, because, well, we know he has been strangled. Yeah, we, yeah, know. we, we know. what. Buy some linen, no less! Uh, very nice. Some university linen. Who would look at that linen? The British Museum is there, and the Uni Uni London <laughs> University College is at 43 WC. Well, I, I think they're going to university. The university seems like a good show. Like well, right, right, right. Um, 43 right. WC. Right, university. Write this down. Claire might not pick it right now. Claire, Claire, where do you want to go? But I think this is a good idea to write this down anyway for the future reference. Where do you, where is it? 43, 43 WC. <laughs> Water closet, 43. <laughs> 30. 43. 43. 43. Yeah, really. Yes, it's in here. Fantastic. Okay. We, we didn't know him. Yes. He worked for the museum, not us. <laughs> Fuck hell. Surely oh, you know, they don't know the cryptic corpse. Surely you know the university and, and, and museum are <laughs> deadly allies. <laughs> <laughs> are forbidden lovers. <laughs> Embroiled in a secret war. They are, they, are, they are separated by 41. When we find out what that building is, we'll know the truth. <laughs> a battleground. Se yeah. Separated by a... a separ uh, embroiled in a deadly war for knowledge. <laughs> it takes a little bit of sleuthing mm, just to locate the Egypt Egyptology department. But when we arrive, we find Why its chairman, Lawrence Field. Ah, Lawrence Field. How oh, no, Lawrence Feld, sorry. Lawrence how, how Feld. Feld. How do you spell Lawrence Lawrence? Yeah, yeah. Lawrence Feld, F-E-L-D. Quite willing to talk with them. And he's who? He is... He's the, in here! The chairman... And he lives there, I imagine. ...of the, of the university. Yeah. Oh. Feld, quite willing to talk with us. Mr. Feld, anything you can tell us about the expedition or the victims would be helpful. Such a tragedy. Fine men, 
fine men, fine scholars. Fine strapping men. <laughs> oh, they could give my mummy any day. <laughs> I still can't get over the shock of it. <coughs> when I heard of Turnbull's death in Egypt, well, what can I tell you? The expedition, <laughs> the expedition was sponsored jointly by the university and the British Museum. Ah, oh, swarm on enemies. Eben Ebenezer Turnbull. Ebony. Has led, has led several ex expeditions to the Luxor Karnak area. Yeah, that's and has that's right. okay has made some very significant discoveries. But no sooner does Sam! he return to Sam! London from an expedition than he is busy planning his next. It was the first time he teamed up with James Windybank. Ah. Windybank has spent more time in classrooms ah, than in the important. field. But to my great is a scholar, he's not an adventurer. But to my great surprise, he insisted very much on being chosen oh. and in the end got along perfectly well with Turnbull. Some might say too well. He was a very popular teacher and several of his students were eager to accompany him on his oh. expedition. I know he had a difficult time choosing Weatherby as the lucky one. So Weatherby was the student. Oh. Doesn't seem so lucky now, does he? I guess Travis is the lucky one after all. Aha! Uh -huh. Travis? There is yes. one who would get lips! Philip Travis. I'm on it like a car bonnet. Philip Look. Travington. There's, there's still more about my friend. What's his face? What's his face? What's his face? No. Who was, who was, a, who was a student? Weatherby. 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 The second guy died. Mm -hmm. Yes. Whether Philip Travis, yeah? Yes, Philip He's Travis. He's 50 EC, by the way. Because we're going to want to talk to him. Oh, oh yeah, your mates are there. Philip was 1L2. Oh. Philip Travis. <laughs> yes, Philip Travis. Where is he? 50 EC, he lives there. He was one of Windy Bank's students. So he's another student. Oh. And he was very eager to accompany the Cape, Cape that... Expedition. Not he became enough. quite. You said a cake baking expedition. <laughs> cake that <laughs> expedition. He became quite upset when Andrew Weatherby, a graduate student in the department, was chosen instead. Oh, this is a bit red He took it there. rather personally, actually. Oh, You've been oh. most helpful, Mr. Feld. Can you think of anything else? No, but I certainly hope you're not taking seriously this rubbish about the murders. No one's the, dead. The, Watson appears. Aha! <laughs> being the work of a mummy. This kind of superstitions, stu superstitious doggerel does a tremendous dis disservice to science and scholarship. Thank you again. Good day. Well, I don't... I cannot believe that this chap did it. No. No, no. that's going to be a red But he will that's potentially be know someone who did. I don't know that he will. We should all, we should <coughs> talk to him. No, my bloodthirsty wife has been furious since the incident. Look, she's just come back from the linen factory. <laughs> um, no, I can't no, stretch his round no. hands. Let's hold this chap back no, I'm, until I'm, I'm, we we're, are we're stuck. dry. Well, yeah. Who are you going to look at next? Week? There, we have a list of people. Yeah, I, I, Most of them are dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I wasn't going to go see him straight away. So Good. No, I, I say just doesn't. I would say things, I would like to go and talk to this Herman Ramsey or Luther Tenney who did the investigation into the mur into the death of Weatherby. Mm -hmm. Are we on what? Have we got the thing? Well, they're from the Jardin Company. Oh, let's go to the Jardin. Well, they might just tell us. Oh, they did it. Oh, right, right. The shipping company we've got. As well. yeah, Jardin, Jardin isn't noted. Well, Her Herman Ramsey's in here. Where? Mm -hmm. 32 WC and let me have a look for Luther Tenney. Oh, yes, I've been killing people. Uh, 11 SE. So, okay, cause they're I different. think. Because there are different places to the Jardin. I think that they are a much better bet than Mr. Obvious. Maybe they're trying to cash in on something. Well, I don't know. They were, they were called in to do the investigations, and at the moment we have no clues about. Well, uh, the thing, I, well, I was thinking of going to um, Tur Turnbull's house. Why don't we go to or, Egypt? Or yeah. Scene of the the original scene of the crime. It, 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 oh, horror! We need the money for a steamboat. <laughs> what are you thinking? 
Uh, <coughs> either Windybank, Turnbull, or Weatherby's house. Hmm. Okay. Um. I mean, Windybank's the obvious choice. Yeah, because he's the one who just died, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, let's have, let's go to Windybank's right, house. Alright, you're cool. You never know. There might suddenly be a lot of murder weapons in there. <laughs> uh, can we just, it's on the last page. Can you tell me where it is? We should cast off all the spells and stuff trying to win this five points. Ah! Oh, ah! What the <laughs> fuck are you doing? The lights doing? were on! <laughs> the lights on? And I didn't realise. Oh, dude. That was very You're funny. an idiot. There's no other word for it. Fuck you, mummy! Well, that is going to really wake up people watching the video. <laughs> what the fuck? Watch- all two oh, minutes. Oh, well, then, W. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have photo effects? That was like the most guilty <laughs> thing you've ever done. <laughs> 12 and W. <laughs> James Windybank's widow, Hildegard. Where are we? Where are we? Windybank's house. Oh, okay. Hildegard. Hildegard. <laughs> Hildegard. H I L D E G A R. Before you continue, mate. I was getting the accent right. Hildegard. Hildegard. Oh, James just <laughs> licked to have some stew. <laughs> so I was into the parlour. I told him it was his day to go on this expedition, but he was determined. <laughs> he said that he had spent his life studying and, and that this was a chance to actually get out into the field. Is this the student now that's... No. Good God! God. This is Windy man, Bank. keep up, stop turning the lights off and pay attention. <laughs> this is Windybank, the man who's just been killed. Yeah, wasn't he the... No, Windybank was the professor who picked Weatherby oh, okay, as right. the student. Windybank and Weatherby are very similar names. You had trouble, you had trouble with plate-based people earlier. Yes, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not people, <laughs> fucking Winkles. <laughs> Did he talk about the death of his colleagues on his return? No, not particularly. He remained very evasive. So he Ooh. feared for his own life. I didn't do it! <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but a certain paranoia had settled in. The poor dear wanted to flee all that ridiculous publicity, and he had decided that we'd take a trip to the continent. Going around the world, that, did, that didn't seem like him. But this whole case probably disturbed him. I thought that... I thought when I married a professor that our lives would be quite uneventful. The Lord moves in mysterious ways. Did she say that? What's that? Yeah, crap. yeah I know. Well, that was rubbish. I think right. people, these people that are dead aren't going to be. You're dead! Right. <laughs> That's off with the life! <laughs> right. Um. <coughs> I'm going to Ramsey. Where's Ramsey at? Give me his address, Ben. Ramsey! Ramsey Snow! Ramsey Snow! Who's one called Ramsey Snow? So, Ra- Herman Ramsey <laughs> is at 32 WC. You're at 32 WC. This is- you have 32 WC. <laughs> oh, there's a really big one. No, you just saw. Right then. Captain Ramsey, can you tell us about the circumstances of the death of Andrew Weatherby aboard the em- Eastern Empress? Ah, well, we just come through a rather large storm. So I sent my first officer, Luther Kennedy, down into the hold to take on the cargo. The cargo, the cargo, the cargo. Ah, that's right, Penny. <laughs> the reported back that Mr. Weatherby was dead among the Egyptian artifacts we were transporting. I turned over the helm to Teddy and went down to look for myself. Weatherby was lying there. Next to a coffin, or whatever it's called, he had a piece of old rag wrapped around his neck. Strangled, apparently. I went back to the bridge and put Teddy in charge of the investigation. <laughs> what, Teddy? what did Mr. Teddy find <laughs> out? Teddy's You'd have to friend. ask Teddy about the specifics. I was rather preoccupied with the ship through the voyage. One storm after another, all the way to England. I countersigned Teddy's report, of course. But I can scarcely recall the details. My chief concern was that my crewmate was blameless. And the report indicated as much. As far as passengers are concerned, a strange lot. All in all, Teddy can give you the details. You have you have quite the quite the mannerism there, Mr. Ramsey. <laughs> so Teddy. 
Okay, we need to go to Spenny then. But I still claim that mine was more profitable than yours. Uh, okay, so Luther Kenny is at 11. Well, we didn't know he was married until we went to mine. <laughs> so, she did it. There's a whole Tenny. part of his life that we didn't know about <laughs> until then. Let's see. Oh, this one's quite big. Quite a big one. How's this spell? Big Buster. Big Buster's roll with Buster. He answers the door. It's pronounced Tenai. Wait, what, what Tonight is 11 inches. <laughs> <11 inches. laughs> <11 inches. laughs> <laughs> Me father was a tricky. Lieutenant Luther Tenney <laughs> tosses his hands up in the air. <laughs> my, my God, what a voyage! I seem storms all the way! Cargo <laughs> to be selected, cargo to be secured, and re secured. A discontented crew, a strange collection of passengers complaining and bickering all the way. <laughs> I tell ye, the murder, even boy of horrid hells in your room, mummy. There's only one of a series of unfortunate events. Oh, Christ! <laughs> what the fuck happened on this voyage? One of our crew was lemony snicket. <laughs> 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 well, we understand that you were the one to find, Mr. Weatherby. Yes. <laughs> there was a pause between the blows, and Captain Ramsay, that be storms in your landlubber, <laughs> ordered me down into the old to your kind of cargo again. I went right to the area of the Egyptian artifacts as Professor Windebank was <coughs> particularly anxious about them. Could you describe the scene as you found it? <laughs> I found Weatherby next to the coffin thing, with part of the mummy's winding sheets around his neck. Various crates were open, and papers scattered all over. Ah! Papers scattered. Somebody was a-searching. Weatherby was lying right beside the crate next to a bowl of ashes. Oh. He was stubborn outside ours. <laughs> <laughs> On the mummy! It's fucked like a bowl of plate? What? A crate a next crate. to a bowl of ashes. A bowl of ashes. Which is a weird thing to be. I reported immediately to the captain and he put me. Something like maybe. Like incense or something. Incense! Well, I'm never burning papers. Because he was scattered with papers. Yeah. Was he burning evidence or yeah. something? I reported immediately to the captain and he put me in charge of the agent. <laughs> what did you find out? No, no, I'm ready. I'm <laughs> oh, <breathe. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> No, that <laughs> was a very good choice. I don't want to read more. Why are you doing? I don't know. This actually, <laughs> this actually, this actually, this actually reads, Nothing much really, full stop. <laughs> I'm afraid. <laughs> you see it with eight bells. Eight in the morning of our third day out of the Suez. A storm had been raging all night, and so the crew had been put at their posts in the car for. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> put at their posts and accounted for. Uh. The passengers, whether be among them, were all in their cabins, as far as anyone knew or could say. Travis, the journalist, sick as a dog. Oh, a journalist. There's a journalist called Travis. How come we've got a name named Travis? Got a name Travis. Yeah. Uh, that rings a certain level of bell. Can the one Age I bells? read out? Oh, yeah, yeah, I looked him up, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Keep going then, boss. Did it? Oh, he went with them. Oh, he went with them. <laughs> was sick as a dog. The ship's doctor even had to give a sedative. A sedative. A sedative. <laughs> so no one saw anything. And anything all knew anything. What about? What about the bowl? Where is it now? Bowl. What about the bowl? The, the, the what? F- 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 Stuff with burning things in. The ash. Oh. What about? The, what about the bowl? Where is it now? <laughs> I don't know what happened to it. Now that you mention it, I, I don't remember ever seeing it again. You've had nothing suspicious or your usual. No, I didn't say that. It all started with the crew. Seemed are a bit suspicious, not to begin with. Our crew, Indians and Egyptians to a man, but that much more so. The idea of carrying a 4,000 year old mummy spoke to them completely. That reporter fellow, Travis, no service at all with his mystic mummy mumbo jumbo <laughs> about the sanctity of the dead and whatnot. He and Professor Windybank were constantly arguing the point and the crew picked it up. We almost lost him based on bloody mutiny, according to my language. Then there were the two Arabs. One, Favi, always <laughs> had his box with him. Favi is spelled Favi and his box. M-I. He had a box. Yes, always had a box. <laughs> a curious thing. Obviously he, special. Can well, I just ask who was arguing? Windybank and Travis? Windybank and Travis, yes. Okay. That's the two. 
<laughs> a curious thing, obviously special made. It was about 18 inches high. And six or eight inches square. <laughs> Don't know what it was in it, but Fammy never let it out of his sight. In any case, he stayed with his cabin most of the time and didn't have contact with anyone other than Windybank, with whom I've seen him trade a few words on the bridge. The other Arab, Al Saud, or Saud. How's that spell? A L hyphen S A U D. I learned him in letters. <laughs> yeah. Was always looking around watching Fammy. My guess is that he wanted the box, or rather what was in it. Then there was the fist fight between Mr. Fenwick and Mr. Uruburu. <laughs> fight? Oh my god. Who's Fenwick? Who's Uruburu? <laughs> well, wait and I'll tell you, you <laughs> person prick. Are you sure Fenwick doesn't find you? Fenwick and Mr. Uruburu. We, fat, we made him in the Congo. Mr. The lion brought Mr. the passion Uruburu. fruit. But we called him Uruburu. <laughs> <laughs> His name was an onomatopoeia. <laughs> Over what? Over Fenwick's wife, of course. Oh, a bloody woman. I believe, although they were very close-mouthed about it. Thank you, Mr. Teddy. Who's this Fenwick? What? One of the passengers. What's it describe Travis as? He says, well, if you're listening to me the first this, time round. No, 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 what's he describe him as? Reporter. A reporter. A journalist. Yeah. yeah. He, he was sick as a dog. He, he was wasn't a reporter. Well, he was, was, he was down to the guise of a student. Oh! Yeah. Yes. No, no. He's a student no, no. who wasn't chosen to go on the expedition. Yeah, so he's, he's there a... as the guise of a journalist. Yeah, but then he yeah, but then he always got in arguments with with, with bank. Bank. Yeah. Over the sanctity of the mummies and everything. Yeah, so he's showing the fact that basically he was actually the Travis that we know from before. Yes, yeah, but you think somebody would have said, hey, Captain, that's not a reporter, that's just my layabout yeah, Maybe student. everybody was going, all of them were going in on it, that he wasn't a student, he was a journalist, along for the ride. Yes, but why would they, when he didn't pick him? I don't know. This maybe is, he yeah, showed up. We, we, have to, we will have to speak to Travis. Yeah. Now, yeah. Like, yeah. The red herring is so strong. Now get out yeah. of my house. Well, no, <laughs> get out of my cabin. <laughs> no, it's just the fact that he described him as a reporter. Yes, yeah. that's when important. A yes, it is. A journalist. But this, this, this wife thing. Fenwick's wife. Who's Fenwick? Also, these two Arabs, yeah. Fami and Mr. Uruburu. No, Fa Fa Fami and Al Saud. How do you spell it? F. Who's Uruburu? Mr. Uruburu Uru 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 was the one fighting about Fenwick's wife, and then the other Arab. Who the hell was he? The other Arab was Al Saud. Al Saud. Saud. Al Saud. Al Saud. Yeah. Fami. So yeah. Fami. Ooh. An Akram Fami. Yeah. My God. He's at thir 37 WC. Mm. And what was the other guy? Comes over air, stealing all our Uru clothes. Uru Uru. <laughs> uh, yeah. Al Saud, which is Al hyphen S-A-U-D. You might not be Because family is the one with the box. Al Saud. Mm -hmm. Al, Al, Al Saud. Uh, Abdullah Al Saud, oh. Al Saud. Yeah. Uh, 19 S. Jesus, we've got an orgy of evidence in this one. And who was the other guy? Uruburu? Um, Mr. Mr. Uruburu. How are you spelling Uruburu? U R U. Oh, you are. There we go. B U R U. Hang on. U R U. Yeah. I found it last year. And then Mr. Um, Fenwick, so Fenwick would be his second name as well. Oh. Uruburu. Mm hmm. Oh. How many Uruburus are there? <laughs> Just the one. Uh, Aaron A. Aronson. Do, do, do you want to guess his first name? Uru. Anthony. Anthony, Anthony <laughs> Uruburu. <laughs> and then Fen. Uruburu. Where is he at? Where's Uruburu from? Uh, 33 NW. 33 NW. It's a palindrome. U R U B. Where's Fenwick? Fenwick. Is that with an F or P H? F P N. As my mother would spell it. Uh, <laughs> my letter. What was it? Uh, 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 oh, it's a, it's, a, it's a Mr. and Mrs. Isn't it? Mr. Uh, Mr. Merrill Fenwick and Mrs. Louise Fenwick mm -hmm. both reside at a nine NW. Cool. I think they'll just be the bonus questions, to be honest. Yeah. Well, you've been. But bonus questions are worth the visit. Yeah. So, 
Because they always, it's always a net gain. They, they should be our, our afternoon chore and tattoo assault. We can either go see. We have never in our lives done that. We've never been like, oh, and now we know. Let's just have more of a look. We either go see Travis or Fanny. Well, I was originally against Travis, but he was actually on the expedition yeah. when so everyone else said he wasn't. So we well, no, to... <coughs> no one said he wasn't. Well, the university didn't give the impression he was. Well, the, the chancellor guy said he wasn't on it. No, the chancellor no, he said he wasn't he chosen, chosen to go. Yeah. He never said he didn't go. We'll go wow. see. We'll go no, see no, Travis. No. Well, Ten Tenny was a gold mine. Wasn't see Travis. Yes, yeah. we'll go see Travis. That was a good visit. Well, Sailors always free with their information. Fair. And now, how much for a good hard shag? <laughs> oh, is he? Thanks, but that's one. I might want to have to read that. I might want to have to have read you the fucking thing of the jig. Who's writing it? Oh, it's this one. I am. Um... Okay. Ugh. Well, I'm going to Ugh. see Travis. <laughs> Philip Travis. Philip Travis is a handsome young man with enthusiasm, enthusiasm of youth. He appears quite eager to talk to us, an audience. So, you have been reading my articles in the Times. What did you think of them? Oh, what did he write then? He must have written something. Keep, 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 keep reading. Okay. What did you think of them? They were interesting. Thank you. You know I am not really a reporter. Oh? No, I was trained as an archaeologist. Mm. An Egyptologist, to be exact. He says, pointing to a framed London University degree for the tank on the wall. That's why my articles carry the force of truth. And what is the truth, Mr. Travis? The I killed them. The truth is that it's not good sometimes mm -hmm. to bother what is no longer, as even death may be temporary. Travis, Travis goes to a large table in, in his room, cluttered with books and ancient objects. On his table are a number of small mummies, as well as beakers and scattered vials. Travis takes one of these mummies and says, hello, my darling baby. <laughs> <laughs> hello, my darling. <laughs> <laughs> and then, turning to us, he continues. There are the mummy... They, uh, I think it's best to say they are the mummified remains of a cat. It's the mm -hmm. ideal companion. No need to feed it or let it out. And yet we feel like a, a presence, as if life still flowed in it. I mean, not to be rude, but you are queer, and I'm changing my gender. <laughs> he puts the mummy back on top of a shelf with a small smile. The young journalist takes out a sheaf of papers covered with hieroglyphics and then exhibits a barely used bottle of whiskey, fills a glass for a mouthful, and toasts to mummy, which now mocks us from the top of the shelf. Thank you, Mr. Travis. Oh, don't leave yet. Let me show you another of my companions. Thanks, but we really must go. This is tipsy. <laughs> this is... Wow. He's a bit balmy. Well, that told us nothing. It doesn't sound like the sort of person to be going around murdering people, no. though, does it? Right. There is handsome, a... not really a reporter, an archaeologist. Yeah. Small mummies on table, calls them baby. Um, and the cats. Feels that mummy feels that mummies have some life in them. Yeah, I'm... This guy's even kidding. There is, yeah. and it's, it might not be anything, but last night the Trivoli was the scene of a novel, the Diversité de Mon Little Egypt. It's out of a beautiful exponent of the graceful sensuous oriental dance, the Vigure. Uh, so there's someone called Little Egypt, and she was placed out of Egypt and Syria by uh, her name is Apatsu Askra. So <coughs> she might have something to do with it. Oh, we left her up. Uh, no. Can I have a look? Right, I'm going to go and speak to this Fenwick character, I think. Are you going to wait till after my turn, or do you... No. <laughs> I want no. my fucking turn. I'm doing it now. Um, Fami. No. No, 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 I don't think so. I can't ask. ask. I think so. I haven't, like, thought of any way to give it. You are joking. Ask with H. What, what number? 4EC. Like, she might say... I've actually got nothing to do with it, dear. I'm from France. It's not in this case. Why am I right? Because I'm going to say anything I'm going to think. You're having a think? You're having a think? Having a drink? Who are we talking to? I thought that was the end of it. I thought that was the end of it. Fenwick, but I need to know where to go. Fenwick is 9NW. That will piss. I don't know anything about the death of whatever his name was, says Mr. Fenwick. In fact, I only saw him 
once just as we were boarding. I resented the first officer's questions on the matter, and I resent yours. The whole voyage was a disaster from beginning to end. Our accommodations were abysmal. The crew was ill-mannered. This and silly that I told you to book passage on a passenger ship, Merrill. Pipes in Mrs. Fenwick. But who knew you had to? Louise, don't start with me. We leave <laughs> the Fenwicks to their marathon quarrelling. Oh, well. Piss. We need to see the... S- no, there's nothing. The that guy with the box. Know. The guy with the box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to find me then. Where is he? Boys. I'm going to go make you a cup of tea. Thank you. Does anyone else want a cup of tea? Uh, he's at 37 WC. 37 WC. Actually, my, my mug's on the side. It's despicable tea. Thank you all. I think I've got a mug, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> we good? Yeah. What about then? Uh, we knock on Akram Fami's door. And it swings open of its own volition. Wiggins calls F- Wiggins calls Farmy's name, but no receipt but no receives but receives, receives no, no answer. Uh, after a moment, we decide to enter. In the middle of the study floor, we find the body of a man we assume is Ash. Oh my Farmy. God! He is lying face down with a knife protruding from the middle of his back. Holy shit! What, what Farmy's dead. Yeah. Knife in the back. That wasn't no mummy. Better call Scotland Yard, says Williams. While waiting for the yard, we look around. The study looks as as if a struggle had taken place. On the desk lies a copy of a book on ancient Egypt. Egypt open on a page describing a slim statue of Sekhmet made of solid gold. Oh, God. We've got murder in the murder. Before we can get much further, Constable Stilston arrives on the scene. He takes our statement and shoes us out. Oh. Hang on, a book on... Egypt. Ancient Egypt. There's no a book about ancient Egypt. Yes, there is in the in the today's one. In today's paper. Great that one. So we're at Egypt. Up the Nile. Yes, up the Nile. So like we got Egypt. Trinity <coughs> guards with numerous <coughs> sketches by the author. What, 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 is, what was the book on Egypt about? What happened? Where, where was he? 37 WC. Uh, lies a copy of a book on ancient Egypt open on a page describing a slim statue of Sekhmet made of solid gold. And he's, so, and he's like died pointing at it or something? Or no, it's, just on the, it's on the desk. Oh. Yeah, someone killed him for the statue or something. Yeah, it was that's in the he, box. That's what's cool. in the box. Yeah. Cool. Do we want to go and speak to... Al Saud. Uluru? I, I, I reckon Uluru. Uluru. It's Ben Shaw. Yes, Ben Shaw. What sort of Uluru's arguing over? He was arguing with Fenwick. I don't think that's going to turn into it. I don't think that turns into it. Let's go and see Al Saud. 19 SA. I think I'll clue over. Let's see. Our clues are rapidly drying up. I think he's better than Al Saud, though, because. Well, it's not to the man who it. Yeah, yeah, true. And he was one of the other people who was looking. Who was, if who's we find the box, I mean, yeah. yeah. It'll, the question will probably ask who murdered Spark Farm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so what, what, is, what is he? 19 SA. Alright. I think I glimpsed this while we were looking at the, uh, the other one. At the home of Abdullah Al Saud, his Muslim servant tells us that he is not at home. Can you tell us when he is expected? <sighs> Alas, my mum. Alas, my master does not confide in this poor and humble servant. It may be that he is out only for the evening, or that he may be gone for some time. It is my master and Allah's will. Well, piss. He's not home. <laughs> he, well, I think he killed He's him. killed Farmy. Yes. Well, there's the bonus question done. Yeah. So, what are we looking at in terms of names now? Should we go back to okay. the first page? Should, so, I, should I tick some off? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've... We've, we've done... Farmy. Right. We don't ourselves. So we don't cross them. No, I'm ticking. We've done Fenwick's. Yeah. Yeah. Uruburu and Mike. We haven't done Uruburu. Yeah. No, we haven't done that one. Um, yeah. <laughs> still. Oh, yeah, well, that's what we've done. We've been to. We've been to the Universe Tree. 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 Because we're pretty sure we've been to the first one. Mm. That's Ramsey. So we've been to Ramsey and we've been to his. Oh, his Ramsey. Ramsey. He's the captain. We, we went, went to his, 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 his <coughs> place as well. Have we been to Jardin Co? <coughs> we haven't been to the Jardin no. Company, no. We went to see Luther. 
We've been to see Luther and and Ramsey. And Ramsey. Uh, Andrew, where's he be? We haven't been, we've only been to Thingy's house. That's true. We went to uh, Turnbull's house. But we haven't been to Weatherby's, Weatherby's. or Windy Banks. No, no, we have been to Windy Banks. We, went to Windy we hadn't not... been to Turnbull's. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah, Although we're... Turnbull died a long time ago. Yeah. Um, there is also, the person who was talking about the digging in Morocco was called Matinier. I don't know whether we found his name anywhere. Giles Scott. What's his name? Martin, yeah, Martin, yeah. Giles Martin, Scott was yeah. the guy that was killed in an accident. What was J.A. Smuts? Smuts is the guy that wrote to say we shouldn't patient. disturb the, the mummies because yeah. it. Was that Matier? Matier. Also, how is Louis Martin there? Martin, I E R T. Martin, yeah. Martin, yeah. We've been to Winbest, we've been to Winbest. Marshall, Marks. No, no, Martin, yeah. There's also Giles. Marshall, Marshall, Martin. Yeah. There was also Giles Scott who had written about the government. He was connected with the government of Malta. He was the person who was begin was trying to bury the body and got shoved in and died. Yeah, that sounds tough. But... No, there's a Scott. Is oh, wasn't that? That was in Glasgow. Sir G- there's a Sir Giles Scott. Yeah, but he's the guy who's. Um... No, 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 no. Well, well, there's a Sir Giles Scott. Yeah. Francis Scott. Oh, sorry, no. I'm going to give you for James Johnson. James Johnson was in uh, Glasgow. Giles Scott was in. Uh, oh no, James uh, Johnson painted the grave. Yeah. Yeah, James. Yeah, Francis Scott That's of right. Farley Castle, Somerset, no, died no. while he was riding around. This is oh, yeah, Giles yeah. Scott. Giles Scott, government of. Malta, Malta Company. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. He, he was the ex-minister to Malta. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the fact that it, it was connected because it was like a, another mysterious death. Well, he's at 67 last time. Yeah, we can't bring that. Um, There's also that smut guy. No, he didn't die. Oh, he wrote the thing to say, yeah. don't oh, go right, and disturb yeah. the mummies. So, yes, so we haven't today. seen... Uh, Maybe we should go and visit Turnbull's house. Turnbull's house. So Turnbull's house... And Weatherby's house, we haven't been visited. We haven't met, met the Jardin company, and we haven't. It's very difficult. Who was the first either. one who died? Windy Bell. Turnbull. No, Turnbull. Turnbull, Turnbull. In, the, in the in the the the. the okay, then see. Weatherby, then Windy Bell. Yeah. Right, I'll see Turnbull's. Okay. You should be. Yeah, yeah it's definitely. Yeah. Yeah, it might not be much. But it's it, not. It it's be, not much, but. Don't like her. Well. No, you just read that one? Because like, I wrote that one. Yeah, Ben, you <laughs> liar. Yeah. Oh, I did. I wrote, I wrote, I'll have yeah. I'll on Bob on board. I'll sound. I'll sound. That'll be that. Yeah. Okay. It's Turnbull's house, yeah? yeah? Yes. Cool. The landlady shows us into Ebenezer Turnbull's small flat. He was a strange one, always traipsing around to Lord knows where. Hardly ever at home. As the landlady prattles on, we conduct a quick survey of the place. There are books everywhere, but on the shelves where they belong. On a large oak desk are several open volumes dealing with Egypt and several sketch maps of the area of Turnbull's last ill-fated expedition. Did you know that he was the son of an earl? Never (coughs) never know it, would you? (coughs) Do you really think that mummy thing done him in? Creepy, I says. I'm not a bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. We can try the next murder, John. Deary me. Maybe we should go to somebody on the back of the book. Body music. The criminologist, the murderologist, all that. So we've got head coroner, criminologist, police, Scotland Yard. Uh, Arch- yeah, the Arch- archivist. First death marriages. Mm-hmm. Old Bailey's Tribunal. Oh, no, was a raven and rat tavern. Source of information on illegal affairs and on all criminals. Mm. Porky com- might have known about. Oh, that, if that, they were, that if bulldog they were... chap? Oh, maybe, but. Oh, you were right, mate. That's the monkey you used earlier. Yeah. Is that was it? on the table, yes. yeah. Mm-hmm. When we left. The one with the proper in it? Yeah. I don't remember using this mug. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Henry Ellis, journalist at the London Times. Quinn Hogg, 
Pinching Hog, sorry, Journalist at the Police Gazette, uh, Mycroft, Langdale Pike, which is a society columnist, uh, Central Carriage Stables, Lomax, Librarian in London Library, Go see Sherlock. Smug, Mm. Or, or you might know on what was going on with the, the well, guy who got stabbed in we, the back. I would it? rather it, see smuts than Porky. Yeah, the only one, or I would probably go. There's also the Jardin. Mm, I'd probably go. They won't, they'll probably. Oh, they're going to say, oh, go and see the investigators. I'd also, I'd, I'd rather go see Fred Porlock than Jeffrey Schindler. Who's Fred Porlock? The Moriarty guy. Criminal Underground. Oh, someone trying to fence something? Well, well, he's at the well, fence, he's well, Moriarty or, guy. Yeah, Moriarty guy. It just. Yeah, it, it just yeah. feels if there's gonna be some connection, if there's gonna be some weird thing here, it's Moriarty. Yeah. Like if it's just, if there's some criminal thing. Like in the last case. A little bit, yeah. Mm. We're drying up. Up to you. Is it me? Yeah. yeah. Or the the shipping yard, wasn't it? What's the time it looked like? The Jardin type thing. Yeah. yeah. But all they're probably gonna give us. The brand of it. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of information about the ship. And <laughs> At the moment, we probably know who killed Fah Fahim, but we don't know. <laughs> we know nothing about this mummy. No. Who would want to kill these guys? Who would? Mm. Who? It, it clearly <coughs> isn't Travis. Who stands to profit from their deaths? Maybe it was the Chancellor all along. We've done terrible, haven't we? Just yeah, we just, you could tick it off, Josh. Mm. But we haven't done Weatherby's body. We haven't done Weatherby. Weatherby's house. It makes sense who, to go and see all of their... All I agree. Yeah, I agree. that's what I was thinking, yeah. I was thinking... Okay, so... Because he might have something left over. Like, off to Weatherby, some, so... Some, some interesting bits and bit pieces. HEC. Andrew Weatherby's landlord let, lets us into his apartment. It's a small place, comfortably appointed with a, with a minimum of furniture. On a desk in one corner of the room, we find several bound volumes compromising Weatherby's private journal. Comprise. Comprising. Uh, we, pick, we pick up one and flip through the pages. An entry dated June 12th, 1888 catches our eye. It reads, I've been chosen for the Cape Bet exhibition. Uh, Travis is upset, but I won't let his bad temper and harsh words spoil oh, my elation. Hello, bad yeah. temper. Bad temper and harsh words spoil my elation. Already the work of preparation <coughs> must begin. Meeting <coughs> with Windy tomorrow. Yeah, he's called, he's called Windy. Meeting with Windy tomorrow. Mm -hmm. What an opportunity for me. I must be the luckiest man alive. Mm. Yeah. Is that what we get? Yeah. yeah. That's what we get. Mm, well, this paints Travis. In a different light than him. Yeah. But he's got a temper. And yet he doesn't ex display any sign of that when you go and visit well, him. Well, like, maybe that's a front. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess we look at pictures. Yeah. It was hand yeah. that, 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 that bit was a picture clue as well. Oh, okay. okay. Have we done everything in there? Mm. I'm going to go and speak to Uruburu. Oh, I think that's a good call. And then we've... I want to clean We've knocked off all the names then, haven't we? Yeah, yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so Anthony Uruburu, meet us at the door with a warm smile. Tony Uruburu. One eye, bruised and battered and showing oh. most of the colours of the rainbow, Mars is otherwise dashing good looks. Come in, gentlemen. What can I do for you? We want, if there is any information, you can give us about the death of Andrew Weatherby. That was the chap our board ship. Very unfortunate, of course. I'd be glad to help, but I really don't know anything. Perhaps you saw something suspicious or out of the ordinary with regard to Mr. Weatherby. I'm afraid I didn't see much of anything, as you might imagine. 
Is Mr. Fenwick responsible for all, we sh for all your, shall we say, visual impairment? Yes, a most narrow-minded fellow, which is no doubt why Mrs. Fenwick smiled at me the way she did. Then the fight was simply over an exchange of smiles. Mr. Uruburu grins wryly. There was a bit more to it than that. Mm. Sexy that rye. Yeah, that's it. So, nothing there. Okay, we've got a lot of time. The only one we haven't seen Jar down. Smut. Oh, I see that. I definitely vote Smut. Well, I'm gonna go yeah. for Smut. Then. Well, what, what, where's, where's the Jar? Where's Jar then? I mean, they're just gonna tell us to talk to the blinky uh, investigators. Yeah, they're gonna say go and see the investigators. We don't know anything. So Smut is the last name we know, and then we're fl we're flying names. in the wind. So who got the name? Is it forty SE? Where am I looking? Forty SE. J A Smut. Was that number twelve? Just maybe we should talk to Sherlock. Yeah. Was it forty SE? Yeah. Not, not in, in there. Not in there. Right. So that's no good. Oh. Okay. Then. Well, let's go and talk to Sherlock. I vote Sherlock. Well, uh, there's only, there's only the, the right Jardine Co. Yeah. 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 Sherlock. I'm going to talk to Sherlock. Now. It's always two ends of the week. Thirty. What was it? Thirty. Forty-two is angry, isn't it? He's not here. <laughs> He's not here. <laughs> Sherlock Holmes is bent over his retort reports and is performing a strange chemical experiment when we enter his living room. Well now, William, how goes this hunt for the money? Nothing really great, sir, I'm afraid. I must admit that a bit of help wouldn't be amiss. Come now, William, retorts Holmes. The case doesn't seem so complex to him. To start with, there aren't that many culprits, especially if our suspects have an annoying tendency to disappear. London is truly a large city, but I think that a well-guarded dig site or even a boat are places that are sufficiently sealed to largely restrict the range of investigations. Get a move on, William, and remember my lesson. Feeling somewhat pathetic, we exit Baker Street, leaving Holmes to his guilt once again. Oh, well, Travis did it then. Yeah. Yeah, it's got to be. Has to be. Why? Because he didn't get chosen to go. Yeah. And, and, and I know, let's go so... to the conclusion. So in love with it. Vote conclusion. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm very good yeah. conclusion. Yeah, right. I, I, okay. I, I I really don't think there's that much I, left. Well, it's a thin book as yep, well. I agree. I don't, I don't Travis did it. Okay. She yeah. Sherlock Holmes solved it in two yeah. visits. Yeah. 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 Um. Shall I write the okay. right? Okay. Sometimes you've got to call a spade a spade. Is it question it is question? Yeah, so we did. Rather than answers, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, number one, what's it say? Uh, okay. Who killed Ebenezer Turnbull? Travis. Travis. Fil Philip Travis. Philip Travis. Why was he murdered? A jealous lover's rage. No, <laughs> he, wasn't he wasn't chosen to go on the expedition. Yeah. Right, Travis wants to poison the investigation. This is where things go. Well, no, no, well, no, he, he wasn't, because oh, he wasn't chosen to go. Yeah, jealous of yeah. Who killed Andrew Weatherby? Travis. Well, the fact that there's a separate question suggests that he wasn't. Well, now, well, there's a third one as well that asks us how Windybank was killed. Well, who killed Windybank? What was the first one? Who killed Turnbull? Who killed Turnbull and why was he murdered? Third question. Who killed Weatherby? Why was he murdered? Hold on. Fifth question: Who did, killed Windy? Ah, did Why they kill? It, did they kill each other? So the, the second one killed the first one. The, the third one killed the second one. That would be one. really weird. Well, well, who would have killed Turnbull then? In that in that case, he was arguing with Weatherby, wasn't he? No, he was arguing with Travis. No, no, no. Who found Turnbull? In Turnbull the was dead. Who found? Who found Turnbull in there? Some like diggers or whatever. Oh, um, uh, the guy who's disappeared. Mm. Have, uh, yeah, let's go with that. Yeah, right. the, the guy who disappeared. Al Saud. Yeah. yeah. Killed, killed him. No, what about the guy that's dead? Yeah. Um, Fahim killed, he killed Fahim. What about Fahim? Okay, so Fahim killed They were yeah. about Fahim killing Turnbull to get the gold. They went into the dig site. Ah, because Turnbull wasn't a treasure, a treasure seeker. They were treasure seekers. They were like, ooh. Nice bit yeah, of gold. Yeah. I'll take that. Hey, that belongs in a museum. 
Quick, we need to kill him. But if we kill him, people will know that we did it. Yeah. Why don't we make it look like a mummy's okay. curse? So who killed Ebenezer Turnbull? Fahim. Uh, Fahim and. Fahim and. Uh, Al Sal. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Why? Because they wanted to steal the golden amulet and Turnbull. They wanted, they wanted, they wanted, why was he murdered? They wanted yes. to steal the treasure. Oh, yeah. Oh, and Turnbull's really anti treasure. Uh, so the top yeah. one, Turnbull is actually yeah. Fahim. Yes. So yes. One is. And our sound. I think we've missed something. No, no. And then on the boat, it was them again. Or the other one. And because of searching two was for because what? Who, because Who they always were, had the box? Because they were treasure hunters. Fahim. Fahim. Right. Then in that case, Fahim killed Turnbull. Al Saud killed Weatherby. Or the rest wanted the rest because uh, and wanted Fahim had to keep the box. I am right in saying that the reason the Turnbull was killed because they wanted they wanted yeah. the treasure. But I think I think I think Fahim. Fahim killed Turnbull. Yeah. No, Turnbull, and then Al Saud killed. killed for the no, statue. killed Weatherby, because Fahim had to keep the the box at all times. So Fahim killed Turnbull. Yes. And so then, Fahim's been number one. Yes, and then and I think Al Saud killed Weatherby. Is that number three? This is where all this is actually just Travis. Yeah. <laughs> is that whatever. Travis, number three? Travis, Travis. Why are you asking this separate question? Weatherby. Oh, oh, although Weatherby could have been Travis. Travis. That, well, hang, w- Weatherby was what? Oh! <coughs> I'm going to stop writing for a bit. What if it was Travis? Because he realised that now that this mummy curse had been done, he had a, he had a means to cover his murder. Yeah, who, who, Weatherby was which one? Weatherby was the prof- No, Weatherby was the student. Weatherby Windy was Bank was the professor, and Turnbull was the adventurer. Okay, so I reckon Travis killed Windy Bank for not choosing him. I agree with that. I would almost, I, I almost reckon he possibly killed uh, Weatherby as well. Because that's, well that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, because he was jealous of going on it. Yeah, yeah but he has motive to kill Weatherby, and he has uh, the excuse of the mummy's curse. Yeah. This maybe she just come to the job and come. <laughs> and they'd be like, oh yes, there were plenty of bloody hands on the... But, so Turnbull, we're agreed, was the Arabs. Yeah. Right? Hold on, hold on. So, number one. Fahim and Saad, or just Fahim? Let's just say... Fahim. Let's just say Fahim. Okay, and because they were treasure hunters. Yes. No, they no, wanted the, the, and they because wanted a, Fahim they wanted the gold took a stamp, to a, a golden statue. Yeah, yeah. Took, and Turnbull was, wouldn't then take it. Yeah. He wouldn't leave the site. Right, so, so who killed Weatherby? Because at this moment I'm now confused. So so. Well, Weatherby is either an Arab or it's Travis. Yeah. So Weatherby's the other student. Ah, ah, ah. Travis. Ooh! Maybe it was the Arabs. Because they were burning the paper, right? Burning the results of the find so that people wouldn't know there was a golden sca- statue. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I vote Al Saud for the murder Weatherby. of it was Weatherby. On the boat, right? Yeah. Okay. And by this point, Travis gets back, sees his opening. <laughs> so the yeah. reason he was killed was to sort of get, to get rid of him and also to remove the evidence. You know what? The statue. Or maybe it was the Arabs again with freaking uh, Windy Bank. Because Windy Bank was well, actually... had free entry into the place. Well, because Windy Bank And maybe was... Travis was just a red hair. Because Windy Bank was like uh, looking through his... Ex- so wait, wait, wait. Through his display. To, who, why did he kill Weatherby? Is that a question? No. Yeah, yeah. Why was he murdered? Why was Who? Weatherby murdered? Because he discovered the manifest that listed the golden statue. And he was missing. And it was missing, so, so they, they killed him, him right. and they burned the manifest. What, or, or they were burning the manifest. Oh, and he came across and it, he came, And he yeah. came across it, yeah. In which case, it was probably our right. Saud who killed... So, so who he discovered the him? manifest of the statue. No, who killed statue. Weatherby? Yeah. Oh, okay. Rather than Fahim. Right. Rather than Fifth Fahim. question. Who killed Windy Bank? Right, now, the, it's irritating that they ask it's either, who killed him. It's either Fahim well, it's or always, it's Al-Sad. It's the Arabs or it's, or it's Travis. I don't think it's Travis. I, 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 he, see, wouldn't I kill, doesn't, he doesn't seem like a man who'd kill people. He doesn't feel right, does it? Like, but, but he does from what um, yes, the one guy said. Yes, but he said angry. a temper. I mean, like, it's months that this has been going on. Too much, maybe he just snapped and did because there's nothing. He kills him and then tries yeah, to hide but, the body. The other one didn't try and hide the body. That is a good point. 
Like he, the third murder of Windy yeah, Bank was totally to hidden. Right, yeah. he hid Let's say Travis then. You know what? He is mental. Yeah. Yeah, and he that's killed true. Him. And now he's got like, oh, it's the mommy that's doing it. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Like, yeah. Killed him because he wasn't chosen to go. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's getting a lot of circular. Ah, and all of this is getting him a lot of publication in the Times. Yeah. Yeah. Because he's an Egyptian expert. And it sort of hypes up yeah. his story. Yeah, we get that. Yes. I think that's a good idea. Is that, is that actually a question? He wasn't chosen. Is it number six a Why was he murdered? Okay. Why was who murdered? Windy Bank. Uh, jealousy. Name, murder. Uh, name, murder. Okay, name, okay, okay. murder. Oh, the way that you'd said it before, Four, it sounded two. like Turnbull, why, and then who murdered, who murdered. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. why. It sounded like who murdered person. Turnbull, yeah, no, 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 why was he murdered? We get it, it's just the way it had been read out. So, so what far. are we saying? We're like saying, like saying jealous, we're saying, we're saying resentment. Because he wasn't chosen. And resentment. Yeah, yeah. And resentment. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. there was no damage done this time, was there? And like, his sort of... And nothing was missing. From this, almost. Right. Part two. Who killed Akram Fahmian? Al Sal. Al Sal. Al Sal. Damn it. Uh, this question one for question part two. Question one, part two. Who, Who killed Al-Sal? Akram Fahmian? Al Sal. And it's Al Sal. Mm-hmm. Which object passed from one pair of hands to the other in this case? The golden statue the, of Isis. No, it's not Isis. It's, it's like Sekhmet. Sekhmet. Sekhmet, yeah. Holy shit. How, how much better is that? The golden statue of Sekhmet. God damn it. I wish Weatherby had been really poor. Yeah, because then he might have stolen it yeah, at the yeah. tomb. How were the victims killed? Yeah. And then killed by strangulation with the mummy's um, uh, oh. rocket strangulation. That's okay. okay. Strangulation. Yeah. I really feel like we probably should have spoken to the whatever. Yeah. Poisoned. No, no. It can't have been strangled. It could have easily been forced. No, we should have spoken to the fucking autopsy guy. Yeah. Well, what? Oh. Whoa! What do we say? How do they get killed? Strangled. We're not seriously strangled, saying strangled, but we give linen, are we? No, no, strangled. Strangled by a hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Strangled by a hand. Also, I can't get any other way, but it's. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, I'm interested. It's, it's a bonus question. Yeah, I've, I've enjoyed the case. Well, Watson, let me set your mind at rest. I think we have a suspect other than the mummy. Come, Holmes. I never thought for a moment this was the mummy. What's it's the daddy. Life? I know, Watson. I know. The mummy did have one thing in common with the murderer, other than the victim. They were the only ones present at each murder. Mm. Well, of course, Holmes, you state the obvious. But the important thing, Watson, is to see the obvious thing. At first, we had two elements with which made this a rather simple case. First, the place where the murders took place allowed us to limit the number of suspects. Then, the fact that these suspects were assassinated one after another considerably reduced the possibility. Limit the number of suspects. The first murder took place in Egypt, the second on a boat, and the third in London. It seems there were many possible subjects, the population of Egypt and that of London. Yeah, some dick. <sighs> no, not at all, Watson. Good boy. Taking into account the common modus operandi, we could easily deduce that these murders were linked. We vastly, this vastly limits the number of suspects, especially in the case of the boat. According to the newspapers, the Eastern Empress was in Bombay at the time of our first murder. We can thus eliminate the crew members from our list of suspects. Yeah, they weren't crew members, mate. No, they were passengers. They were passengers. Were they? Yeah. He had a freaking house in London. Oh. Everything, therefore, centred around the members of the expedition. My first step was thus a meeting with Lawrence Feld, head of the Egyptology Department in London University, and we the first indicator of the Katibet expedition. He could give me the name of Travis. It seems that Travis had been an Egyptologist student and that he had been under Professor James Windybank's tutelage. He tried to be part of the expedition, but was turned down by Windybank. Windybank. Whether he had chosen in his stead, which affected Travis, a nice suspect in truth, more so since a set telegram sent to the Times confirmed that he had managed to follow the expedition to Egypt as a correspondent. So this Travis is our culprit. Uh, You're going too fast, Watson. Even if Travis made a nice culprit, many elements quickly proved to me that he couldn't be implicated in all of the murders. Ah, yes. First off, <laughs> his first article clearly shows that he could never enter the tomb and thus commit the first murder. <laughs> what the fuck? What article? Was not we must we miss something in the paper? Oh. Yeah, we've missed something in the paper. His first ask was, was that when he reported on on the guy being met. Oh, he reported on the expedition going, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, but yeah. when did it say? Oh, I couldn't go in the tomb. Right, keep going, man. Um, then a conversation with Luther Tenney, who led the invasion to the death of Weatherby, clearly proved to me that he couldn't be implicated in the second. Moreover, Tenney, by telling me of the tormented voyage of the Eastern Empress. Gave me one of the missing keys, 
Why would Weatherby, in the middle of a storm, feel the need to verify the contents of the expedition's crate? Probably because he realised that an item of great value was missing. From then on, only one person could have stolen that item from the tomb. You may James Windybank. Yes, Watson, Windybank. With Turnbull and Weatherby dead, Travis out of the loop, there remains only him. When Feld mentioned his insistence of being named at the head of the expedition, I started being suspicious about it. Wow. The conversation with Tenny only confirmed my doubt. But I was lacking a motive, and I thus consulted Langdale Pike about Windybank. Who is he? Uh, the... Society columnist. Society. Ah, bollocks. Uh, he revealed to me that Windybank, madly in love with his wife, was spending a fortune to keep up her love, her lifestyle. Oh. Money and from then on, everything was clear. Windybank was probably paid to bring back an item from the tomb. He was unfortunately surprised by Turnbull and killed him, realising his misdeeds and improvising around a curse. But of course, Weatherby didn't believe that story and probably guessed Windybank's intentions. Windybank's implications when he saw him chatting with... Did anybody else think that Windybank was like an old man? Yes, I had it in my head. Yeah, Windybank and Turnbull were quite old in my head. Saw him chatting with Akram Fahim, who was apparently transporting a highly precious object. He wanted to be certain and thus looked for proof in the inventory. But Windybank was already and was wary and thus killed the poor Weatherby, giving us the same five importance for the story of the curse. So Windybank, Windybank killed both of them to begin with. He killed both of them. Yeah. Weatherby gave the same time importance to the story of the curse. But then how did he die as well? Come on, Watson, think. Who remains? Travis, of course. Yay! And for him. The motive is rather simple to imagine. Travis, Egyptology student, and never far from the murders, probably guessed that the mummy didn't have much to do with this whole thing. However, he understood that he could take advantage of this story of the curse to take revenge on Windybank, all the while being covered by the story invented by the latter. The irony is, in the end, Windybank was a victim of his own plot. I agree, Holmes. It was a simple case, I must agree. Well, yeah, so yeah, we, we missed the thing about Windybank, fair enough. Uh, Holmes has solved this case <coughs> by following four leads. He went to the London University, oh, yeah. the Times. We didn't do that. Oh bollocks! We could have gone to the Times. Oh, we find all that. No, it isn't landed off like at the Times. Yeah. No. Go on, keep reading. Yeah, keep yeah. reading. Keep reading. Uh, Luther Tenney and Langdale Pike. Yeah, uh, we didn't go to the freaking Times. Times. He also used the following articles from the newspaper: recent excavations in Egypt. Yep. 17 August mm-hmm. 1888. Archaeologists dead in Mummy's Tomb, 5th of March 1889. Yep. Shipping departures, 5th of March 1889. Maybe the Empress was mentioned in that. And the Mummy Strikes Again, 12th of April 1889. His score is 100. Who killed Ebenezer Turnbank? Uh, James Windybank. Nope. Why was he murdered? He discovered that Windybank stole something in Catabet's tomb. Technically, we did say that someone had stolen something. Half what's points. The, what's the points for uh, that? That would be ten points half. Yeah, fine. No, it is ten points half. half. It's twenty normally. Right, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, cool. Ten. Who killed Andrew Weatherby? James Windybank. Uh, Why was he murdered? He suspected Windybank. He discovered oh. the manifesto. No. Was no. So what the fuck was all that burning crap? <coughs> Windybank did it after the fact, didn't he? <coughs> Tim killed Bank Windy awesome. Bank, Philip Travis, 10 points. Woo! And why was he murdered? Vengeance. It wasn't 10 chosen points. for the yeah. thing, yeah. 20 points. 20. Yeah. Only 10 points to get him and 20 points for the motive. Yeah. It's probably because it was easier to work out that okay. he killed someone. Yeah. Part 2. Mm-hmm. Who killed Akram Fahid Fami? Abdullah Al Saud, mm-hmm. 5 points. Which object passed from one hand to the other in the case? A golden statue of Sermet. Yeah. Five, five points. points. Five Twenty points. points. Twenty points. Yeah. Wow! How were the victims killed? They were strangled with bare hands. Oh! Five. Oh! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I am. A, I am so glad that I was like. Wasn't fucking linen. <laughs> it's bare hands. <laughs> Bears hands. And how many? Well, he followed how many leads? Four leads. So we followed thirteen. So. Do we any three? Yeah, the four that he would. No, no, no. Oh, but we didn't go to uh, two of these. Tell your score. Add the points of two. Yeah, points so then, then count the number of leads you followed. Don't count the three leads indicate there are no free leads. Yeah. The All the ones that he went to are free, free leads. Oh, it's just in the first one they actually do less free leads. No, no, yeah, but uh, that's not that sort of thing. Oh, but that, no, that was because sure. in the first one there were like en- embassies where it was like, we go to the embassy. Oh, I'm afraid he's at his house. Like, that's why. Okay, so ten. 
20, 40, 60, 70. Minus nine, nine times five, is it? Five, yeah, five times five. So, so 45. So 45. So what's no, that? no, not nine. 11 times five. Because we didn't go to two of the places he went to, so they're not free. He went to the Times and Paul. I went to we the London University, Luther Tenney. Yeah. And those are the only two we went to. Those are the only two we went to. So, we went so, to. 11, so, so 11, 11 times 5 is 55. 55. 15. 15. With Edward School. Positive School. Yeah, it's true. That's why I did it. Why did you try to Fifty. There you go. Cool. Make taste. It is, yeah. Oh God, damn it! If only we'd known that he was poor. You know what? Well, well, you even said, "Oh, would we?" It's annoying that such and such isn't poor. Yeah, oh, no, so, no, no, so we did the student. Yeah, yeah, we did. Kind yeah, of yeah. The, the money angle. We didn't I didn't get from the wife that like he that you know, they were living an extravagant lifestyle. You know what I mean? No, I think that's what was missing. Uh, that was probably what oh, was well. missing. Oh well, oh well. We should have we should have thought about the society angle, I suppose. Murray actually confirmed that it's not the bandage because he says that he can't work out how they were, he can't see any markings of how they were killed by oh. the bandage. So oh, we guess that one. Out. Oh, well done. Cool. You'd say that the windy bank strip was probably used to embalm the corpse of a child or an animal, not that of an adult man in many case. <laughs> oh, say that again. The oh, that's interesting. Say it again. I'd say that the windy bank strip was probably used to embalm the corpse of a child or an animal, not that of an adult man in any case. Uh, uh, so it's Travis. So yeah. that, that gives away Travis. Travis yeah. and weapon. because it doesn't specify the other yeah. two, it suggests that the other somebody two else. Are. But then again, yeah, he, no, he yeah, didn't no. have the evidence from no, those, no, did no, he? No, but it just suggested that it's not. Because I, he says, I can assure you, these bandages were not murder weapons. 